There are 11 teams that play basketball in the Big Ten Conference. No one has adequately explained that one to me as yet. But when Michigan meets Michigan State on the hardwood, no explanation is necessary. Such is the case tonight in East Lansing. Ron Franklin has more for Sports Center. Thanks, Tom Mees. Tonight, number seven comes calling against number 25 at the Breslin Center in East Lansing, Michigan. It is the Spartans playing host to the Wolverines. Ron Franklin, along with Clark Kellogg and Clark, you grew up in this league, you played in this league, and you know as well as anybody the importance of winning at home. Spartans have got to start doing it. They really do. They've played three games already here at the Breslin Center, have not won any of them. You take a look at the scores in those three games. Against Illinois, they only shoot 31% from the floor. But the other two games, they had double-digit leads in the second half and ended up losing on the last second shot to Wisconsin in overtime to Iowa. Clark, let me ask you about one other thing. Michigan played 48 hours ago. Last night, I saw a Missouri team in the same situation. They looked listless in the second half. Is that an edge for the Spartans tonight? I really don't think so. When you talk about the intensity of this rivalry between Michigan State and Michigan, you talk about what's at stake for these two teams in this ball game, I think you'll see emotion and intensity at their highest level. So it is the Wolverines and the Spartans, number seven against number 25, and we will have it at 7.30 Eastern time. Now back to Sports Center. Thanks, Rob. Our Super Tuesday doubleheader starts in the Breslin Center in East Lansing, a neighborly Big Ten feud. Number seven, Michigan at 16 and three against the 25th ranked Spartans of Michigan State who come in at 11 and 5. And welcome to Super Tuesday along with Jim Valvano. I'm Chris Fowler. John Saunders not here because we are delighted to report his wife Wanda gave birth to a new baby girl. Six pound, four ounces, Jenna, Tiana, Vanessa Saunders. It's a mouthful. We congratulate them. John, congratulations. I know Wanda, the baby, are doing well, but you'll do anything not to come to work, huh? But that's great. You got two girls. I've got three. That's five. I think Chris Fowler has an announcement to make tonight. No, Chris? Uh, first thing is first, oh, okay. Jim. We'll have highlights of the birth at halftime. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's talk about the game. Michigan and Michigan State, both recent victims of Iowa. And Michigan State, winless in 1993 at home, 0-3. That's shocking. And last year, Michigan beat them at Michigan State. So if they want to get their season together, get it going, you got to win at home and you buy to be, better beat your rivals. Yeah, if you can't get it going in this kind of a game, you got big problems. Game number two tonight, another rivalry in the SEC. The winner gets first place in the SEC West. Arkansas against Get Hammock and LSU at 9.30 Eastern time. But it's the Big Ten next, the Wolverines and the Spartans. Sean Resper had 23 in the Spartans' upset win at Purdue. Ron Franklin and Clark Kellogg will have it for you. We'll see you at halftime. Miracle has made uh, a very big difference in my life. If you have trouble hearing in noisy situations, the exciting Miracle Ear Clarifier may be your answer. The clarifier features a special filter that automatically reduces background noise. One of my hobbies is uh, dogs. I train Dobermans for the show ring for obedience. In any dog show, there's a myriad of noise. After the mirror clear and the clarifier, I never have problems uh, listening uh, and hearing the judge give out commands if I'm in the ring. No problem at all. It's absolutely wonderful what the mirror clear has done for me. Find out if Miracle Ear can help you. Call this number. Miracle Ear will send you a booklet on better hearing, plus a coupon for a free hearing test. Call today. Learn about all the good news from Miracle Ear. With the new Miracle Ear now, uh, I got a whole new ball game. Michigan, the Great Lakes State. In basketball, it's the Michigan Wolverines that make the noise. Head coach Steve Fisher has them ranked seventh. But 60 miles down the road, the Michigan State Spartans want respect. They last had it in those magical days of Irwin Johnson, but now, with the inside power of 6'9", 275-pound Mike Poplowski, and the outside touch of fleet-footed Sean Respert, Coach Judd Heathcote will have his say. Tonight, this is the Breslin Center in East Lansing, packed to the rafters with over 15,000 fans to witness one of the nation's most heated interstate rivalries. They are standing, they are
start cheering. There was a pom-pom in every seat before tonight's ball game, and all of them are waving. Over 25,000 tonight to see this matchup. Let's make it 15,000 between Michigan and Michigan State. And there you see the conference standings. Indiana on top, then Michigan. Michigan State with a 3-4 record. Hi, everybody. Rob Franklin along with Clark Kellogg, and welcome to East Lansing. And these folks are focused. Now, as far as the conference is concerned, Michigan State and Michigan can ill afford to lose anymore if they're going to stay in it. But the Spartans have got to stop losing at home. Clark. They certainly do, Ron. They're 0-3 here, 3-1 and on the road. When you talk about moving into the upper division in the tough Big Ten, you must win your home ball games. Well, in talking about individuals when it comes to Michigan State, the two men that have to come up big for them this evening are the two fellows that the students like to refer to as Pep and Pig. And when you talk about those two guys, they're about one-fourth of a ton in combined weight. Peplowski goes about 6'9", 270, but he possesses a nice shooting touch, shooting 58% from the floor. Anthony Miller comes off the bench. He, too, about 6'9", goes about 250, an excellent finisher and rebounder in the paint area. Okay, Clark, my question for you is, we all know that Michigan made it to the Final Four last year, but in the conference race, they have stumbled just a little bit. Sophomore jinx? I really don't think so, Ron. You take a look at their losses. One point loss against Indiana at home, and then they lost Sunday at Iowa. I think both cases were, it ended up being a case of Michigan losing some intensity and not making big plays down the stretch when they needed to. One individual for the Michigan Wolverines. He may be playing a little bit out of position, but boy, as he talked about, and for good reason, and that's Jalen Rose. I like to call him the Velcro for this unit. He's 6'8", playing the point guard position, second in scoring, leads him in assists. Here he goes rack to rack. The kind of floor game he has will go a long way in determining tonight's outcome. So we are just moments away. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening tip-off as Michigan takes on Michigan State. You know you can get cash just across the street. But did you know you can get cash all across the country? Using the same card you use at the cash machines at home. That is, when your card has a plus. Because plus marks the spot for cash when you travel. At cash machines in big cities and small towns. In all 50 states and beyond. So check your card and name your street. Magic Moments, presented by Dodge. Before the NBA in Barcelona, Charles Barkley was known to college hoop fans as the round mound of rebound. Barkley led the SEC in rebounds for three straight seasons. His Godzilla dunks and inside power game made him the SEC Player of the Year. Barkley led the Auburn Tigers to their first ever NCAA tournament bid in a classic Magic Moment. It has a 10-cylinder, 400-horsepower engine and seats up to seven. It hits over 1G on a skid pad and has an available built-in child seat. Its front fenders resist dents and chips. It has 133 sound deadeners, silencers, baffles, and mufflers. And there's room in back for 49 bags of groceries. Caravan, Viper, and Intrepid, the new Dodge. Crystal knows there's nothing like pure, clear water. That's why Diamond Crystal makes some of the most advanced water softener salts you can buy. Make your water special with Diamond Crystal. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. By HBO. Think you've seen great entertainment before HBO? Just you wait. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. Well, the folks were in green tonight, and they are in abundance. Are up and ready for this one. That's the Breslin Center in East Lansing, Michigan. And let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two clubs tonight. Brought to you by Advil for the Michigan Wolverines. 
King, Rose, Jackson, Weber, and Juwan Howard. And Clark, he is Mr. No-Nonsense. He goes about his business. He is all business. Sprained his ankle yesterday in practice. A little ginger on that right ankle. Right ankle. We'll see how that evolves. Steve Fisher, as you can see, two and four against Michigan State. The starters for the Spartans tonight. Stevens, Wyshynski, Kapowski, Respert, and Eric Snow at guard. And I guess defense is his biggest side of the ledger rather than the offensive side of the ball. Exactly right. He's an excellent pressurer of the basketball. But if the, if the Spartans are going to have an opportunity to win tonight, they need him to make good decisions in the, in the transition game. Judd Heathcote, 16 and 16 in his career against Michigan. He told me just a couple of moments ago, he said, I don't want to get into their running game, but we're not good enough to play just half-court offense against the Wolverines, so we're going to have to mix it up a little bit. So we'll see what kind of flavor he comes out with early. I think the key for the Spartans is they've got to do a job on the backboards so they can get some easy scoring opportunities in transition. against Chris Weber to jump it up in the air and the tip goes to the Wolverines you can expect Michigan State to be in a man-to-man -man defense but they'll really protect the paint area they're going to make Michigan shoot the ball from the perimeter snow puts it deep in the corner Wysenski for three, not there. And it's Weber on the board. And that's another thing that the Spartans are concerned about. One shot and out because of the job that Michigan does on the board. Howard left alone on the baseline. Not there. Jackson with the follow. That's 40% of the Wolverines offense put back. Rested. Can't get it to go. And Popowski not there in time for the rebound. And so Michigan will push it back. It is not enough to play good defense on the Wolverines on the initial shot. All five guys boarded. Lob inside Weber. Four to nothing. And Weber with that tip of it. It's not really a taunt, but that is his way of getting himself fired up and his teammates fired up. Well, I talked about it a little while ago. Emotion and intensity will be at fever pitch here tonight. Look for Respert. Kowalski now will get it to him. Four to nothing. Wolverines on top early. Inside the pet. Nice move on the baseline. He'll score the first two. Boy, he is a big man, Clark. And if he gets any kind of drop step on you, you're going to wind up with a foul or he's gone by you. Exactly. He eclipses you in the post with that wide body. Jump hook. Can't get it to go. It'll be with the Spartans. On the run. Restrict pitches it off the glass and we're tied. Wyszynski, I beg your pardon. B to Howard. Easy two, and if they get it in that low, there's not much stopping the combination that plays down in the paints. You love the unselfishness. Weber and Howard will reward each other for good ball movement once the ball is passed to either one in the low post. They draw so much attention because both are so skilled there, they often have an opportunity to hit the open man. Bounce pass is stolen. Wolverines come away with it. Jackson misses and Popowski will rip it down. Jackson was a very prolific scorer in high school, but has been called on to play primarily defense since he's been at Michigan. Popowski almost an air ball. Barely drew iron on that one. to go after he came free. Snow had the step, but missed the layup. What about the man-to-man? -man? Are you surprised that the Judd is going this way? Well, I talked to him this morning. I was a bit surprised, but he really doesn't like to play zone and said his team has been 
categorized as his own team because they won the national championship with it 60 years ago, he said. So everybody assumes they play zone when, in fact, they play a lot more man-to-man, -man, but it's a sloughy, soft man-to-man -man where they actually concentrate on keeping the ball out of the paint. See, take a look. Nobody out beyond the free-throw line, really. Look inside to Rose, and he'll get it. A whistle and a foul. I believe Poplowski will pick up the foul. The interesting thing that they're doing, and your point is well taken, Jackson that far out of the three-point line, nobody came out to pick him up. He said, we'll give you that shot. But the only problem is if you're going to take away the inside, you can't allow a pass like this. Pseudo penetration by Jackson. Snow loses, kind, loses sight of the ball in his man and ends up getting burned on that little back door cut by Jalen Rose. And after the field goal, Rose had some theatrics for the fans right behind us. <laughs> Riley checks in. Weber goes to the bench. And Steve Fisher immediately goes to Weber and is down on one knee and is discussing what is happening or not happening on the offensive end. Anthony Miller, who you talked about in the opening, another wide body, the fellow they call Pig. What the students have nicknamed him, number 34. Well, he is definitely a pig on the glass. Their best per minute rebounder. He gets one every three minutes of play. Not there and it's Rose. Boy, Michigan's guards crash and do it well, but when you're as big as he is, you gotta go to the glass. Well, Jimmy King is third in conference play in boards, averaging five a game, but between him and Jalen, they come up with close to ten boards a night. Five points for him. Riley got tapped on the arm, and it's Miller who will be called for the violation. One of the keys tonight, in addition to what we talked about at the top, inside play by Miller and Peplowski, to go right along with that is neither one of those guys can afford the cheap fouls. They need to stay on the floor for a long time tonight. So we'll take a break. Eight to seven, Michigan. We have played just over four and a half. If I want to keep playing baseball, I'm going to have to keep working. There's no off-season anymore. And when I get sore, I take Advil. To last, you stick with what works. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. How reliable is a Dodge Caravan? Ask the family who put 217,000 miles on one. Every morning we drive 40 miles to school, and then I drive 40 miles back. Then if we have viola lessons, we have to go to Provo further south. 217,000 miles went by, and I never had to worry about it. The Dodge Caravan, it's just a part of life. It always goes. It always does what I want it to do. With over 3 million sold, our minivans are a part of more lives than all others combined. Reliability is one of the reasons. My first name is Riddick. My last name is Bo. I'm heavyweight champ, in case you didn't know. Many have compared me to the greatest Ali, but I hit like a truck. He just stung like a bee. Arr. See Riddick Bo's first title defense live only on HBO. I tell you, Dokes, you shouldn't show up. Michael Dokes is so ugly, he hurts my feelings. Think you've seen boxing that's great? Riddick Bo is on HBO. Just you wait. That rhymes. I like that. Gillette introduces the best shaving gel ever. New Gillette Gel. Advanced lubricants. Easier razor glide. An incredibly smooth shave. Now the best gel is Gillette Gel. 8-7 Michigan very early. You're effective in the post by using your feet. Take a look at Weber. He just kind of leans and baits Peplowski into thinking he's going high. Then the nice reverse pivot. Eye contact made with the passer, and you've got the finish at the basket. Then at the other end, again, take a look at the lower body, folks, the feet. Look at this. He beat Weber before he even caught the ball because he had drop-stepped on him as he caught the ball and got to the basket. Excellent work by both those guys. And look at this right here in the Big Ten field goal percentage percentages. Popowski 67, almost 68 percent, and Weber 63. Well, you shoot a good percentage when you get shots <laughs> close to the goal. And that point blank's pretty close. 
Michigan. Michigan seven rebounds in the ball game. All five starters have at least one board. They all go to the glass. That's why it's so important for Michigan State to rebound the ball defensively because then they've got an opportunity to transition because all five gold jerseys will go to the goal. Rob Polinka had checked into the ball game and it, the foul is called on Juwan Howard. His first. You know, Michigan is out rebounding their opposition in conference games by eight boards per game. And I said earlier, they get 30 to 35 percent of their points on putbacks. Well, actually, and it, it, to talk about the job, I mentioned what Jalen did a minute ago. Their guards have three rebounds already. It'll stay with the Spartans. 14 minutes and 46 seconds left to play in this opening half. 8-7 Michigan. This is where Michigan State has had trouble in the half court offensively. You know, that's what I told you that uh, Judge said just before the ball. He said, we're not good enough in half court to, to, to dwell on that all night. King comes away with it. Polinka will pull it up and they'll reset. Quite honestly, Ron, there are very few teams good enough to survive on simply a steady diet of half court offense. King, nice spin move, and he knocks it down. Only two of the last seven shots for Michigan have they put in. Stevens wants it inside, and he will get it to Miller, but now Miller got to look for some place to go. Miller got away with a walk. He had one plant foot. He changed it to the other. And the officials were looking to see if he had stepped on the sideline, missed the walk. Three yeah. turnovers now against them. He covered an awful lot of ground with one bounce, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> the pick was moving. <laughs> Ten to seven, Michigan on top. Whistle away from the ball, and it's an offensive foul against Michigan. And I believe they're looking at King. His first. Left portion of your screen. There it is. King just trying to get himself open. Little lower body root canal on Wyshynski. Got the foul called on Jimmy King. I'd like to see King be a little more aggressive. He's got a lot more to his game, I think, than he's been able to show or that he's, than he's been willing to show. Weber with the steal, and they're going to call the foul on Michigan State. And Judd has just gone ballistic. He can't believe it. Take a look at it. You make the call. Good steal by Weber. And now Stevens knows he can't challenge the shot, steps in, and from that angle, folks, it was the right call. You know what? I think maybe if he hadn't tried to hook him with his leg, mm -hmm. that it might not have been so quick to call it a defensive foul. Here at home, it might have been an offense. Excellent call that time by Steve Wilmer. Right on top of it. Steve about 6'5", so he gets a nice bird's eye view of most calls. Weber gets the follow. Palenka, nobody picked him up. Nobody boxed him. Kapowski prepares to check back into the lineup as it is a five-point lead for the Wolverines, and that's going to be a travel. One of the things that makes it so difficult about trying to defend this fine Michigan team, though, Weber shoots a three-pointer on the last trip. This time he's down in the paint. You don't know where you're going to have to contest him, do you? They've really got tremendous versatility. They've got size and strength up front. They've got enough depth to wear you down. They're very explosive. Because everybody rebounds and they defend so well, this team has tremendous spurt ability in that they can get an awful lot of points in short periods of time. There's one of those fouls you were talking about against Pep, that, and his coaches will call that a little bit of a, a cheapie. It's his second, but watch him clearing out here. Judd Heathcote and I talked about this this morning. He said Peplowski will try to get open in the post with his upper body too much and pick up one or two silly fouls again doing that prime example right there. Again, I said it earlier, you get open in the post with your lower body. Rose, how in the world he got an angle. Four points for him, and it's now 14 to 7. 
and Papasi's going to have to be extremely delicate. We are early for him to have two violations. In the paint, the hook. Bethay in the follow. Damon Bethay, who got double figures in minutes in the last ball game, beginning to play more and helping. In the last couple, run, he had eight points in 11 minutes at Purdue, six and 10 minutes in the game prior to that. So Judd Heathcote gaining confidence in Damon Bethay. Four turnovers against the Wolverines. Right now, you've got a situation where Michigan State has pretty much done what they've needed to do other than keep Michigan from second shot opportunities. I think they've gotten three or four putbacks. But other than that, the pace that they're playing at is good if they can convert, Ron. See, they've had transition opportunities that have come up empty for them, and that really demoralizes you. You've got to convert those quick hitting opportunities to get some confidence as you go back down to play deep. You see Michael Talley, number 14, out of Detroit Cooley, who has checked into the lineup. Riley battles for the board. Popowski tries to bang it off his leg, and it's going to stay with the Spartans. So timeout. 11:59 of the first day of 14 to 9 Wolverines. When Bill Demby was in Vietnam, he dreamed of coming home and playing a little basketball. A dream that all but died when he lost both legs to a Viet Cong rocket. But then researchers discovered that a DuPont plastic could help make truly lifelike artificial limbs. Now Bill's back. And some say he hasn't lost a step. At DuPont, we make the things that make a difference. Better things for better living. The reviews are in, and this new Toyota is a winner. Automobile Magazine calls it a global success. Motor Trend calls it a car with definite family influences from Camry and Lexus. Detroit Free Press calls it the benchmark. We call it Corolla. Presenting the all-new Toyota Corolla. Discover why, after 25 years, it's still impressing all the right people. A small touch. A certain look. It's the little things that are worth the most. Which is why every Delta faucet gives you more than you'd ever expect for the money giving you the money for those things you can't even put a value on. Delta, the way water is brought to life. 14 tonight, Michigan. Be sure to stay with us. Coming up next, we have the matchup between Arkansas, led by Scotty Truman, and the LSU Fighting Tigers. Dale Brown, Nolan Richardson, and a classic coasting mashup from the Maribyrn Center in Baton Rouge. And it follows this game at 9.30 Eastern Time. Timmy Brando and Larry Conley standing by down in Baton Rouge. <laughs> well, that, that'll be a fun one, and you can imagine that Nolan will not be given red roses when he comes on the floor there. Just like Dale has not had it. He doesn't have a hand delivered when he goes to Fayetteville either. Well, that timeout just in the nick of time for the Spartans had expended an awful lot of emotional energy. Hook again close but not there. A mention before the game of the staff. They were hoping that he would use that more. It's something that Pep has been working on. Yeah, he got in early this morning. They didn't have a formal shoot around, but he came in early and got up a hundred or so baby hooks and drop step moves and getting ready for tonight's action. Weber for three and not there. And a foul with Sinski. He ran up underneath on the rebound attempt and it's first on him. I think it goes without saying we're very close to the student section here at, at Michigan State. And yeah, they're right on top of us. <laughs> Michigan 0 of 3 in three-point attempts. Got Heathcote going to get Plepowski out of the game. He's got three, two fouls already, so give him a chance to, to take a little breather. Bethea, along with the Miller. 
also Dwayne Stevens up front. Harden's going to the 2-3 zone. Fourteen to nine, low scoring affair so far. Howard looking for a spot to go, and he's gonna have a travel. And if it had not been a travel, he was in the paint for a very long time. It could have been either one of the Jeopardies, but it is a turnover against the Wolverines. There you take a look at what Michigan does on average. A little subpar thus far, but they've gotten pretty good looks, Ron. And at some point, they've got to start converting those because I think it gives you ammunition and confidence at the defensive end when you get some shots to go for you. Restrick not in the ball game right now. Weber with emphasis. Wow. If, you, if you gamble and miss, you pay. Because when he gets within three feet of the rack, he's punching it. Looks like the Phantom of the Opera with that uh, with that mask on. Somebody said today at our production meeting, Michigan leads the nation in broken noses. Nice spin move as Michigan State finally puts two more on the board. They had a long drought there. Are you surprised at the, the low scoring and slower tempo in this one? Howard is the Wolverines try to pick it up a little bit. Not really, Ron. The pace has been pretty quick. The conversion rate, certainly for Michigan State, has been what's lacking. They've gotten a good number of shots up in the first half of this first half. They just haven't converted many of them. And again, you have to try to score quick baskets against Michigan. Their half-court defense is a little underappreciated by most. David throws it away. Juwan Howard. And he misses as Weber is there to score, count it, and he was fouled. Boy, that's big. Weber has come up with a couple of situations, a garbage point there, and a foul, and a couple of jams. Here you see, off, after the good steal, no look King to Howard. He's going to blow the initial shot, but Weber just carves out some space, just slid Anthony Miller out, out of there. Gets the basket and the foul, and that's not easy to do. I mean, he moved Anthony Miller out of there to get weak side rebounding position. Miller goes about 250. Miller now with two fouls. As Weber completes the three-point play, he now has seven points, and it's 21-11. That's nine points on second shots, Ron, out of a total of 21 for Michigan. Judd Heathcote walks over, sits down, he gets back up for a second, but he can't believe some of the foolish turnovers that his ball club has had in the last couple of moments. Riley will come back in, Howard goes to the bench, and of course, you all know the story on that, the luxury of Michigan having a guy who was a starter, in fact, two years ago, and even part of last, until the Fab Five came in, and now he's a number a number six or a number seven man. Mm -hmm. A lot of clubs would like to have that problem. <laughs> you better talent. believe it. Jalen Rose. We're in a danger zone for the Spartans. They're losing a little confidence. They haven't won at home, so you wonder if they start pressing a little bit an attempt to get off the snag and they're down double digits they need a couple of baskets consecutively to get themselves some confidence and some momentum i think you're right that's ray jackson who picks up the foul his first and he almost got bumped into the man as weber was coming out to help out on the play what clark is talking about we played over half of this first half of the spartans only 11 points Wyshynski will come back into the lineup, the junior from Purcellville, Virginia. Bethea will go to the bench. One of the things you have to do against Michigan, they've got size and quickness at every spot, but you have to be ready to knock down your perimeter shots. When you challenge them inside, they're the best shot blocking team in the conference at just under seven per. So you've got to be ready to hit your open jays. Three is not there. Michigan State, Clark, has more turnovers than they do field goals. They've got seven turnovers and only five field goals so far. Well, I mentioned how Michigan's defense is underappreciated. Some of those turnovers, the unforced variety, others in direct correlation to the defense by Michigan. 
Snow dishes Wyszynski for three. Got it. In the nick of time, and now he has eight. They needed that desperately. Somebody to pick up the slack. One of the best times, maybe the absolute best time to shoot the three is in transition. The defense is unsettled, and they don't want to run out to behind the arc to guard a shot. Three-second violation. So there's a timeout on the floor, 7.45, and the crowd back in it. Success in life is the result of preparation and having the right tools. To become the person you've always wanted to be, select Nordic Flex Gold. You provide the effort, and Nordic Flex Gold provides the means to your personal success. You want to develop the poise, confidence, and energy that come from a strong, toned body. And just like these people, you can have that body in just 12 weeks with Nordic Flex Gold. Some people spend a lifetime wishing for a great body. Now with Nordic Flex Gold, you can unlock your potential in as little as 12 weeks. Nordic Flex Gold features linear motion and patented isokinetic resistance, providing results fast, up to 70% faster than with rubber band machines or even free weights. Now is the time to act. Great muscle tone, three times faster fat loss, increased energy, as well as poise and confidence can all be yours in just 12 weeks with Nordic Flex Gold. To order or for more information, call now. Hey, you want to take four of your luckiest friends to the college basketball championships in New Orleans? Just dial 1-900-370-FAB5 to enter and win ESPN's Fab Five Fantasy Basketball Weekend. It's only 95 cents a minute. You get 95 cents sitting around, and you got to be 18 years or older. Your own jet, luxury hotel accommodations, great restaurants, and the best seats for all the games. Hang with guys like Dick Vitale. ESPN's Fab Five Fantasy Basketball Weekend in New Orleans. Sponsored by Quaker State and Pizza Hut. Call right now. No phone call required. You take a look, Michigan State trailing by seven, but this is good basketball all the way around. Look at the box out by Poplowski. Stevens gets the board. Snow going to kick it ahead. Wyshynski to your left fills the lane. A third guy doesn't get there, but Rose naturally gets to the paint, and by that, by the time he reacts to Wyshynski, it's too late. Defenders are taught to run to the paint. That's why it's so good to be able to shoot the three in transition. And, and also the Spartans have got to start shooting better. Barely over 33%. Wyshynski is 3 of 5 in, in attempts. The rest of the team only 3 of 12. And they have had some in-close opportunities that they have blown. I think they were idling a little high early. That emotion and adrenaline yeah. was pumping. Now they've idled down and they should be able to get some finishes. Case in point right there. He's going to go to the line for a couple, but he had an opportunity Popowski, to uh, to get a three-point play. Just used his body to get to the cup. Eric Riley, take a, take a listen to these numbers. Roy Tarpley is the all-time leading shot blocker at Michigan. Numbers two and three are on the current Michigan team. Eric Riley is second. Chris Weber is third. Depending on, on how long Chris Weber is a collegiate, is a collegian, rather, he probably will become the all-time shot blocker. Well, Voskel has just checked in the ball game, and after watching the lick that he took this weekend, I'm a little bit surprised to see him in there with broken nose and all, but he is wearing a plastic face mask just as Weber wears. I talked to him before the game, and this is his first time in competition with it. He didn't practice yesterday because they didn't have the mask made. He said it's not really a hindrance. Chris Weber's nose was a little displaced, so he needed surgery. Voskel's nose was just slightly fractured, and therefore he did not require surgery. After watching that lick on Sunday, though, that was the only oh, thing was slight about it. Yeah, well, you're he exactly really right. Got clobbered. Jalen Rose. Nothing that hurts any more than that. They run the clock almost all the way down, and they take the crowd off of it with the easy shot. And Pep comes back with two at the other end. 23-16. Drive, draw, and drop a dime. That's what Eric Snow did there with the quick hitting penetration. Another lane violation. Weber will come back into the line. And there's Boswell, and you can take a look at that mask, and you can see how black his eyes are mm -hmm. from 
And folks, if you've ever had a broken nose, I, I just have to think that the youngster has in the back of his mind, please don't get bumped tonight because <laughs> you'll cry for hours. And there's the other mask, Weber. And in fact, he's about to be able to take his mm -hmm. off, right? Yeah, he's very close to getting rid of the mask. Although you wonder if, in fact, having been hit there once, would he not wear it the rest of the season? Klaus back outside. Wyszynski from 12 gets it. Beautiful inside. Ten points for him. Outside action. Kaplowski felt the triple team and got it back out to Wyszynski. Snow with his first. <laughs> People with very little sympathy about the broken noses of some of the student section with tape across the bridge of their nose. Bonus situation, seventh foul. Well, it's always nice in hostile territory when the fans are screaming and going crazy to knock down one of those free throws that hits nothing but rope. <laughs> it's so much sweeter when it's a cleanly made free throw to silence the crowd. That old melody of chord and floor. Oh, yeah. Nothing like it. And he did it twice. Double the pleasure. 25-18 and still a seven-point ball game. About to go under five minutes until halftime. Air ball, Kapowski right there, lost the handle, and then he'll score after he regained some presence and control. Big trip right here. Weber in tight, can't get it. Weber battles for it again, and he's fouled. May have taken a shot to the face. He's not up quickly at all, and I think he took a shot right to the face there. Actually, it looks like he's grabbing his mouth now, but great work inside. Tenacious rebounder is Chris Weber. There you see him bumped by Stevens and then grabbed by Stevens there. From that angle, hard to say exactly where he got hit, but... Now what they're checking for blood right mm -hmm. I think he may have taken a shot in the mouth here's another angle there's the fight for the loose one Weber comes up with it he's bumped right there by the body and hey. then smacked across the face you're right by Stevens yep Clark, the thing that, that would make it very difficult with that mask, you can see from the shot that we had from the back, as you see his mouth is bleeding, but how tight those straps are around the back of his head so it won't j become jarred and block his vision. Five-point game. Boy, Eric Snow really pushing the basketball. Unfortunately, more times than not, he hasn't had teammates out in the lanes with him. Since he knew that it was touched by Michigan, so he just let it go out of bounds. 5-10 until intermission time. I think Michigan State has weathered this storm rather well to be playing no better offensively than they can. I'll agree with you there. Resmer, they got to have him, and here he comes. Weber gets it. And that's all Popowski could do with the two fouls. He certainly didn't want to pick up a third right there. Snow and My a foul against Weber. My goodness, Eric Snow is just pushing the basketball right at the Wolverines and creating opportunities for himself or his teammates. Doesn't get the finish here, but this puts tremendous pressure on the defense coming right at you. Nice little move to avoid King and draw the foul. 
Weber wanted to walk, and my partner here wanted to walk, too, but I think that was well within you know, the rule. In, with, in looking at the replay, you're right. They're going to get Popowski out not only to catch his breath, but we'll, we'll see if he comes back or not with that two fouls. You know the judge does not want him to get number three just before halftime. Well, that's a rather ugly number, to say the least. He just got well. You know they know what he's shooting from the line after the response he got that's for knocking that one down. That's the first one for Michigan State of the night. Nailed them both. Two-point game. Hey, I tell you what, Ron, for a guy that struggled as much as he has, you don't know how much of a lift that could be to him, his teammates, and this crowd to knock down two free throws. Howard got free. Boy, Stevens missed an opportunity, overplayed him, and got caught. I agree with their head coach. In watching the way they played half court, I think they're doing the smart thing and pushing it up the floor the way they've done the last three trips, don't you? There is absolutely no doubt about it, and I think that's the way you have to play Michigan if you've got somebody that can push the ball ahead because they're pretty solid in their half-court defense, and yeah. you want to try to get easy looks. The best way to do that is in transition. Great and then you, also, you've got a chance to wear them down a little bit by pushing the ball back at them. They've got to not only worry about getting down on offense, but now they've got to worry about getting back on D. Miller on the follow of the frustration will get the foul, and that's going to be three on him. That foul a moment ago, by the way, on Jackson was his second. You know, and the other thing about fatigue, and we talked about this in our cut-in that we did for Sports Center. This Michigan team played 48 hours ago, and they did it on the road. Now here they are on the road again. Last night, we had Missouri at Kansas, and I thought Missouri looked a little listless in the second half. They had a similar situation. Game in 48 hours later. That's, that's tough. It really is. Because not only do you get worn out physically, but... You've got to gear up mentally and emotionally, especially when you're in your conference. And particularly when you're coming with a state rivalry like this one. Exactly. Not there, Stevens gets the board. And Six he, rebounds for him. Dwayne Stevens is unheralded, but all he does is make winning plays. Gets you four or five assists, six or seven boards, tough D, doesn't make any mistakes. He's very easy not to notice until you take a look at the film and see all the good things he's done for you. And then add senior leadership with that. Air ball. Wow, tough one there. Well, he kind of bagged us there, didn't he, Ron? Yep, sure did. <laughs> right after we souped him up. <laughs> He overshot the goal. Howard. Well, that's nice work inside. Gets that big body turned on. Once he's squared, not much you can do about it. What he does so well, Ron, is he keeps the ball high. Doesn't bring it to the floor. Long misses on three-point shots lead to long boards. But they have misses. Howard pulls it away. Six-point ball game. We're about to go into three minutes until halftime. Six rebounds for him now. Jackson all the way to the hoop. Not there, but look who's inside. Weber loses it back up, and he'll go to the line for a couple. Well, right now, Judd Heathcote wants to be able to maintain, maintain contact with his two big guys out of the lineup. Miller with three fouls. Peplowski, I think, still just has the two. But Judd Heathcote would love to be able to stay within single digits while resting both of those guys and protecting their foul situation. Miller, we won't see the rest of this half. Peplowski, I think, won't come in unless things get a little crazy in the last three minutes here. Uh-oh, Miller's coming back. Well, that's why I'm a former player. <laughs> well, maybe not. No. <laughs> maybe Judd momentarily forgot that Anthony well, had three fouls. I started to say, the trainer who always uh, keeps the board over there probably said, Coach, he's got three, mm -hmm. and that's when he called him back. So the man they call Pig is going to be there until uh, the break time, I would imagine. Timeout on the floor. 3.04 left until halftime. 33 to 25, Wolverines. Do you want to fly where there are no runways?
Do you want to swing where no one has swung before? Or do you want to surf where there is no ocean? And get yourself a Toyota 4Runner. Because where you're headed, you don't want to be driving anything less. I come down, I shoot a jump shot from 25 feet. They call me Ak Ak, Cinemax, Showtime. And stay in the air for two or three seconds, make a move, spin in the air. Hot fudge, fudgy love, nightmare on Elm Street. In New York City, we're pretty much known for talking the most junk on the whole planet. Everybody know I can dribble the ball through rush hour subway and not get the Man. ball stolen. Everybody knows I'm going left, but nobody in the whole city has stopped me yet. I shot a jump shot from your house and it went in right over there. That's range, baby. <laughs> If you want a beer that's less filling like a light with more great taste, why not make a change for the better? Refreshingly different Bud Dry. Bud Dry is one beer that's less filling like a light with more great taste. So why not get it together? Try Bud Dry. Well, we had a two-point game just moments ago. Now Michigan by eight. They've run off six straight. Four of those belong to Juwan Howard. Moving without the ball here. Weber steps out, finds him. Nice target hand. Good seal of Stevens. Easy bucket at the basket. Now take a look at excellent low post work. He is so sound fundamentally in the post, it's scary. Catch it. Look and see what you've got. He tries to drop step. No go there. Pump fake, no go. Keep it high. Excellent patience. Nice use of the window. And I talked to him before the game. I said, big fella, are you going to bring it tonight? And he said, yeah, I can't let a sprained ankle keep me from playing in this one. And he has brought it in big fashion the last two minutes. He's got eight points, six boards in the half. Turnover. Boy, Judd is really upset. There's nothing that upsets a coach anymore than right after a timeout on a play that has been set and throw it away. And that was really what they call an unforced error. Yeah. I mean, nobody really pressuring the ball. So the big fella comes back in. Poplowski back in the lineup with just under three to play until halftime. Well, I think if Judd is going to risk him being on the floor, his teammates better find him at the offensive end and try to get a look inside for Poplowski. Well, as far as the boards, offensive rebounds, Michigan six, Michigan State three, and second chance points, Wolverines 13 to four. Riley, Riley with a pair. First two for him. Excellent catch and finish. He's got a chance to play at the next level, even though he only averages 15 minutes a game. He's seven feet tall. He can block shots. He's added weight. He's got a nice touch. He's a guy that will get a hard look at the next level. Michigan State's got to be careful right here. This is back to a double-digit game, and that shot is blocked by Riley, and he's going to be called for the foul. And look at Weber grabbing, saying, don't react. Just put your hand up. Well, a while ago when Eric Snow knocked down consecutive free throws, the crowd was in it. Yep. And I thought that might be a chance for momentum to swing, but the spurtable Wolverines put together one of their 6-0 blitzkriegs and now lead by 10. Clark, we both had them quite a few times over the last two years. And you know, one of the things that's really scary about them, it's it, we made the analogy during the timeout, it's almost like blood in, in water and they're, they're like sharks. I mean, just they, it's a frenzy all of a sudden and a close game is, is a 10 point game, which is what it's done right here. I like to call that spurtability and to have that as Eric Snow, as good as he was on the first two, showed you why he struggled. That folks is hard to do. He <laughs> and I can't as, as the expression goes that one he would not have hit the ocean with yeah. an air ball and of course Steve Fisher hopped up and said no they can't rebound it that's our basketball out of bounds and I can I can't Michigan. offer any personal insight on air ball free throws because I don't think I ever shot one <laughs> and it's going to be stolen maybe he can get a reprieve here oh wow Jalen Rose a mile high and watch this uh, this foul and block. I like the I like the action by both players here. Here, good anticipation by Snow. Now take a look. He wants to flush this one, but Rose 
defense knows that and makes a great play on the ball. That's really excellent does. play both ways, even though Rose picks up the foul. Aggressiveness by Snow to try to dunk it, and then Rose recognizing that going right at the ball. And of course, we all know, but in case we don't, Percy Snow, his brother, linebacker for the Chiefs. reason they're cheering here is after the air ball he put up last night. He's now three of five at the strike. Boy, you look at his free throw shooting and wonder why mechanics look decent. He seems to really palm the ball though and lay it in his in his palm a little too much. But you like the way he's pushed the ball and you love the way he defends. Howard misses this one. They battle on the boards and Stevens, can he save it? No. And that was a great play attempt by Stevens. Coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett Report. Jim's teaching Tuesday, number 12, Florida State against Jacksonville. Other scores and highlights. And that was almost a great play by Stevens to retrieve the ball before it went out of bounds and then to have the presence of mind to send it towards his goal. Unfortunately, it ended up out of bounds. Well, we've talked about how critical this game is for Michigan State, but it's just as important for Michigan oh, no from doubt. the standpoint that they already have a home loss, and Indiana has already won three road games and going out to an 8 0 -no mark. Oh. Three pointer won't go, but Stevens right there inside took it up strong, and Weber has just picked up the foul. He's second. Michigan foul number four. You get most rebounds on the side opposite from which the shot is taken. Good work here by Stevens. And doesn't have much room, just elects to crack up into Weber and draws the foul. Neither one of these teams shooting it very well from the free throw line, although Michigan in Big Ten play is shooting it at 71%, which is more than respectable. Michigan State comes in at only 64% in conference play. They haven't done much to help that number tonight. No, they haven't. And you know, it, in fact, as they have tried to spurt with Michigan, Michigan State has missed their last five shots. And a couple of free throws in that too, Ron. I know Snow missed two, and Stevens just missed the first there, so. Thirty five to twenty seven. We're about to go under one minute until halftime. Boy Howard really working hard wanting it in the post area. Look at Juwan Howard really begging for it. Battle inside and Howard. There's a couple of folks got cleared out on that one.